Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, once again, it's Thursday's midday breakthrough session with yours truly, Karen Proctor. I am so excited about today. I just believe that God want to give us fresh manna from heaven today. So I'm going to pause for the cause and wait right here until Facebook gather the people to come. So at this time, I will pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I would just give thanks to God until Facebook gather the people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you today for what you're going to do and how you're going to move in the life of your people. Lord God, we just cover. I cover this noonday session. Under the blood of Jesus, I bind up every spirit of interference, every attack of the enemy. I cancel your assignment, and I send it back into dry places from whence it come. In the name of Jesus, and Father God, I pray that you will loose your warring angels to come and gather with me as I endeavor to do your will on this noonday hour. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hello, Angela. Thank you for joining me. I am excited about what God is doing in the life of his people. Hallelujah. So we're going to just wait a little bit longer, not that much longer, until we get a few more people to join us. So if you could... Um, Maybe perhaps invite your friends. We're, today we're going to be talking about His blood, supernatural power, and redemption. His blood, supernatural power, and redemption. Amen. 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 God bless you. If you are um, on this Facebook session, Hallelujah. I just want to give you a shout out if you can make yourself known. Hey, Nuri, thank you for joining me. You must be on your lunch break. What a pleasure to have you to join me today. Huh, Nuri, I know this is going to be a good day if you decided to join me. Uh, I'm going to be talking about his blood, supernatural power, and redemption. Hallelujah. Hey, Angela. Hi. I am so glad to have you guys to join me in this midday breakthrough session on Facebook Live. And the topic today is His Blood, Supernatural Power, and Redemption. And this topic is going to be taken from my latest book, his Blood, Supernatural Power, and Redemption. And this book can be found in all of the major bookstores, Barnes and Nobles, uh, Amazon.com, so forth and so on. And I have a few copies myself. So His Blood, Supernatural Power, and Redemption. This is our breakthrough hour and I, I'm just so happy that you guys are here. I know that we may be in different time zones, but here on the East Coast, it is noonday. And for those of you guys that are uh, at work, you're probably on your lunch break right about now. So I don't take it for granted that you have decided to uh, come and be a part of this breakthrough session Hi, Miss Rivers. I'm glad to have you join me today. Today, we're going to be talking about his blood. And when I say his blood, I'm talking about the blood of Jesus, his blood, supernatural power, and redemption. And we know 
that there is power in the blood of Jesus. So I just want to cover very briefly uh, some of the benefits of the blood of Jesus. And when I say briefly, it's going to be very brief on some of the uh, benefits on the blood of Jesus because I want to make a, a point about prayer and the blood of Jesus. But I just want to go over a few things that the blood of Jesus covers. And number one, I, uh, the blood of Jesus acts as a covering over your life. And we know that a covering protects us from uh, different types of weather. It protects us from nakedness. It can protect us from all sorts of things. But the covering I'm talking about, the first covering is we find the blood, as it relates to the blood of Jesus, was when Adam and, and Eve disobeyed the Lord. When Adam and Eve disobeyed the Lord and the Garden of Eden. Because we know that they walked around free. They didn't have to put on clothes as we do today to cover our nakedness. But because they were disobedient to God and what he told them not to do, so the Lord decided to um, cover them up, cover their nakedness up because they were not pure unto the Lord anymore. So he had to cover them up. And he, the way that he did cover them up is by killing uh, an animal, and taking the, the skin of the animal and making clothes for Adam and Eve. So he covered them up. So we see that the blood of Jesus today acts as a covering in our life. And we do know that blood, that life is in the blood. And we find this out when the two brothers initially uh, came and ate. Cain became jealous of Abe, and he got into a rage, and he killed his brother. Life is in the blood. So when Cain went to offer his sacrifice, and God knew everything. And one of the old sayings that we have, I don't know how you was raised up, but one of the old sayings, uh, being raised up in the church, uh, they would tell us God sit high and he look low and his eyes are in the four corners of the world. Hey, Sabrina, thank you for joining me on this Thursday midday breakthrough hour. I know that God is giving the listeners a breakthrough. We need a breakthrough in so many different areas in our life. Uh, one person may need a breakthrough in one area. The next person may need a breakthrough in another area. So this uh, Thursday midday breakthrough session, the nuggets that God give me is to help you to break through in whatever area it is that you need breakthrough in. So again, we know that blood provides a covering. We know that blood uh, life is in the blood. Hey, Tinker, thank you for joining. We know that life is in the blood. When Cain killed Abe, then he went to went to God to make that sacrifice, his sacrifice. And God uh, told Cain, he says, didn't you kill your brother? And he tried to uh, put it off like, what do you mean? God knows everything. Like I said, God said how he looked low and his eyes are in the four corners of the world. And he told Cain, he says, your brother blood is speaking from the grave. So when he killed his brother, the blood came out and that blood, his life was in the blood. And we know that his, his, uh, his life was speaking to God. It wasn't nothing that God uh, don't know and did not understand. So we know that life is in the blood. We know that salvation comes through the blood. Salvation comes through the blood. Atonement comes through the blood. Atonement, salvation, it's the same uh, works hand in hand. We know that the Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. So as it relates to the Holy Bible in which I believe in, 
and I live my life according to the Holy Bible. We know that in the Old Testament, the uh, the high priest would kill the animals as a sacrifice, put it on the altar, and go behind the veil and make atonement for the sins of the people. So the blood make atonement, but how much uh, greater when Jesus came in the form of a man in the New Testament because the priest himself, he had issues. He had issues in his life. So God had to use his only begotten son, Jesus, the saint, to stand as the high priest. So Jesus gave up his life as the high priest. Uh, he became the sacrificial lamb. And we all know without going into the complete story, we know that Jesus gave up his life. He was crucified. He was on the cross, buried, resurrected. He gave up his life. He became the high priest. He became the sacrificial lamb that you and I can have salvation today. For those of us that has decided to give our lives to Jesus Christ, we know that our salvation come through him shedding his blood, giving up his life. And I want to give you one more benefit on the blood of Jesus. This is not the last benefit, but just for the sake of time, I want to uh, give you this last benefit. Before I go into uh, the prayer topic, it's protection. We know that protection is in the blood. I know today that we use a lot of security companies and we may have a Glock, a 38, or whatever your weapon of choice is for your protection because we live in this fallen world. But if you don't have those things as your protection, and even if you do have those things as your protection, the greatest protection it is, there is, is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus acts as your protection. Hey, guys, if uh, it's making sense and you're understanding what I'm saying, let me know that you are with me by giving me uh, a like, uh, giving me some love by sharing it with your friends, alert your friends to this Thursday midday breakthrough. So we know that protection is in the blood. If you can remember the story, for those of you that know the story, those of you that do not know the story, I, I want to encourage you to open up the Holy Bible, get into it, and begin to read. And you would know this story that when the children of Israel was making on the night of Exodus, leaving Egypt, the Lord God told them to kill the uh, sacrificial animal and take the blood and put it on the doorpost, put it on their do doorpost because he was going to send the dead angel and kill everything and everybody that did not have that blood over the doorpost as their protection. So we know that the blood, that was the, um, the blood of animals, but moving along into today's time down through the New Testament, up until the very dispensation that we are living in today, we know that the blood of Jesus is our protection. The blood of Jesus is our protection. So a few of the benefits that I've already talked about is the blood makes a covering. Uh, there's life in the blood. There's salvation and atonement in the blood. And there is protection and the blood. And you can find out more about the benefits of the blood of Jesus if you purchase this book, His Blood, Supernatural Power and Redemption. I got a call the other day. Um, I believe it was Monday or Tuesday. A pastor friend of mine called me and he told me, uh, Apostle Proctor, because before the book was printed, I forwarded him the manuscript to, to look over the book to give me his thoughts on it, being that he is a pastor. 
so he called me, I believe it was Monday or Tuesday. He says, man, I was on vacation when you sent me the manuscript. He said, although I was on vacation as a man of God, I still do my daily devotion. He says, so I brought my devotions with me to read every day on my uh, vacation. He said, but after you emailed me that manuscript, I began to read it. And as I began to read it, he said, I did away with my devotion and your manuscript became my devotion on my vacation. And I was just like, so taken back. I'm like, wow, God. Uh, he went on to tell me, because he purchased the book, he went on to tell me, he says, and to be perfectly honest with you, my last three Sunday messages has came from this book because it is such an awesome book. And I'm not patting myself on the back. Understand, I'm giving God all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise because truly it belongs to him. Because if he did not upload this wisdom and knowledge to me to put in a book to share with his people, then I wouldn't have gotten a revelation. Hi, Brother Corey. Thank you for joining Thursday's Midday Breakthrough Session where we're talking about the blood of Jesus. And we know that the blood of Jesus is, it in the blood of Jesus, there is supernatural power and redemption supernatural power and redemption comes through the blood of Jesus. So what I really want to focus on today is approaching the throne of grace. And for some of you that know me a little bit more personal, knows that I have uh, a woman's conference it's my signature woman's conference, and it's called Approaching the Throne of Grace. And the Lord gave me this, um, what shall I call it, title, theme, this theme for the woman's conference that I've been having, I believe, for the last five years. Uh, he says, I want you to gather the women and teach them how to come before the throne of grace. Anybody know me? I love to pray. I believe in the power of prayer. So approaching the throne of grace is one of the chapters in this book. And I want to read in your hearing Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. And it says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace in our hour of need. So how does this scripture ties into the blood of Jesus? Stay with me for a minute, and we're going to see how this scripture ties in with the blood of Jesus. Again, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, it says, Let us come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace in our hour of need. So what is the throne of grace. The throne of grace is the most holy place where God is. We know that God is everywhere, but it is the most holy place as in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the high priest will go into the holy place. They had this portion in the tent where he would go and offer the prayers of the people, make atonement, for the people with the, with the blood of the sacrificial lamb. But moving alone into this dispensation, I've already told you that salvation comes through the blood of Jesus. So after Jesus Christ came to earth and he did uh, whatever it was required of him to do, it was now time for him to ascend to be back with his father in heaven. And the Bible tells us that he sits on the right hand side of the father in the most holy place. So we have today, we don't have to go to a priest and confess our sin. We don't have to go to the priest, the man priest that is. I know that in some denominations, some uh, religions, 
And I'm not knocking anybody religion. I'm just giving you Bible. I'm just giving you word. The Bible says we shall know the truth and the truth shall what? The truth shall set us free. The truth shall make us free. So we don't have to do that today because we have a high priest, which is Jesus Christ himself, who shed his blood on Calvary for us. So now he affords us that we can come before the throne of grace. The way into the most holiest place was made by the blood of Jesus. So that's why he tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 and 16, let us come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace in our hour of need. So when we come to the throne of grace, it's a place where we could leave our petitions. It is a place where we can worship. Now, I want you to get the understanding. It is not a physical place. It is a place in the realm of the spirit. So wherever you are as a saint of God, you are the lively stones that make up the church. Wherever you are, you can be riding in your car and come before the throne of grace. You can be on your job. You can be anywhere and you can pray right where you are. When you uh, come to the Lord in prayer, in the name of Jesus, you have entered the most holy place. When you begin to repent of your sins and you come before the Lord, you have entered into the most holy place. The most holy place is a place of prayer. It is a place of worship as well. And how are we able to come to this point in life where we don't need the man priests anymore, whereas we can come to the throne of grace. How do we get here? We get here through the blood of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19 says, the blood of Jesus affords us the ability. No, I'm, I'm reading my notes. I'm reading my notes. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. Let me give it to you straight from the word. Hebrews 10 and 19 tell us we can come straight to the throne of grace through the blood of Jesus. Let me read it for you. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So we're able to come into the holy place through the blood of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19 again. It say, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And that's how we're able to come into the most holy place through the blood of Jesus because Jesus shed his blood, so now we can come to him without having to go to a man, a, ma a priest in the form of a man. We can bypass that because of the blood of Jesus. And uh, now we can get to that place. Notice in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19, both of them tells us that we can come bold, bold to the throne of grace. We can come to the throne of grace with boldness. And what is boldness? Both the word boldness is stressed twice. Boldness is the opposite of fear. It means with confidence, with courage. So when you come into the presence of the Lord, you come with confidence. You come with courage, knowing that whatever you put before the Lord, whatever petition that you put before the Lord, know that the Lord says that he hears you and he would answer you. Hey, Valerie, thank you for joining me today. God hears you and he answers you. You can come before the throne of grace with boldness, with courage. He says that you may find grace and mercy in your hour of need. So today, I don't know what you have need of today. I don't know what area you are looking for a breakthrough in. You may need healing in your body. 
You may need a breakthrough in your business. You may need a breakthrough in your financing, uh, in your finances. You may need breakthrough on with your children, with your relationships. I don't know what it is you need, but today you can come boldly before the throne of grace that you may find mercy and grace in your hour of need. What is grace? Grace is God unmerited favor. Favor that you don't even deserve. Favor that I don't deserve. But because of the blood of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus, he extend his grace unto us. He extend his mercy unto us. His blood, supernatural power and redemption. And we know that the Bible says where any two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. In fact, he said where any two touch and agree on anything, he says that he will do it for us of our Father in heaven. So the blood of Jesus is not a cliche. We hear people say from time to time, oh, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Uh, thank you. Uh, I put the blood on it. But to really, really know the depths of the blood of Jesus, to really know the benefits of the blood of Jesus. In fact, Psalms 103 says, and forget not all of his benefits. There are countless of benefits in the blood of Jesus. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. Isaiah Chapter 53 and 5 says, For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by Jesus' stripes, we are already healed. So what does that mean? Every uh, stripe that Jesus took, 39 stripes, it is uh, said to, to uh, it is said that Jesus took, 39 stripes on his back. And if you would read this book, I, I don't have time to go through all of it. It points you to the scripture, the reason why they gave 39 uh, stripes. Uh, the 39 stripes was represented to today. Every disease, 39 common disease that's known to man. And those 39 stripes that he took on his back was for you and I. Every disease that man encountered, because when they hit him with that uh, whip of cat and nine tail, it caused his blood, it caused him to bruise, it caused uh, blood to be shed. So by his stripes, you are already healed. Somebody may be saying, well, how am I already healed when I have this sickness, when I have this disease? It may be a fact, but once you put the word of God on it, once you begin to uh, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus, confess by Jesus stripes, you are healed. You're going to see healing is beginning to spring forward. So whatever you need, it is covered in the blood of Jesus. Jesus blood is supernatural. Supernatural. Sabrina says, amen. I know it's the blood that protects and keep me and my children. It's healing power. It's beyond words. And I agree, Sabrina. I agree. There are so many times. Uh, hmm. Words can't even express right now. There are many times I've had to apply the blood of Jesus to my life and to situations, things and people that I were interceding for and to just cover those people, myself, loved ones, what the, with the blood of Jesus. And I began to see situations change, situations change. As I think of it, I'm going to share this story and I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, one story comes to my mind. I used to have a, a monthly prayer meeting once a month on a Saturday. And people would come from near and far. And that's the truth. Um, 
back then we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have uh, all this social media and the flyers and what have you, what we have now. So it was, this prayer meeting was just really word of mouth, word of mouth. Every other month, somebody else would tell somebody else. And this little prayer meeting began to be packed. And one of the uh, ladies that was attending, she asked me, she was standing in a gap for a friend that took sick. And the doctor said the friend had, was diagnosed a friend with uh, MS. And she says, uh, Karen, I, I just really need you to pray for this person. Uh, their nerves are shot. You know, they're beginning to shake and they have MS. And that just did not sit well in my spirit. And God began to reveal to me that it was not MS that the friend had. The doctor described it according to the symptoms that he understood medically. But God took me into the spirit realm. That's why, again, this book is called His Blood, Supernatural Power and Redemption. So God took me into the spirit realm and he began to show me what this person was suffering from. It was not natural. It was not natural at all. So when I, uh, prayer meeting was over, I was so tired, wore out, just really praying for all the people. So I was drained. I came home, took a shower, laid down. And as I laid down, I went out into a deep sleep. And when I went out into the deep sleep, uh, because I stood in the gap, interceding for that person, binding up the attack of the enemy, the enemy came back because I stood in the gap and tried to wreak havoc on me. But because my life is covered by the blood of Jesus, I said one of the benefits of his blood is protection. I was protected. The Bible tells us and in Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us and judgment shall be condemned. So as I went out into this mm, vision, I would say, where the Lord began to show me even further what was going on with this gentleman. He showed me exactly <laughs> who did it, why they did it, uh, how they did it. Mm -hmm. The enemy came to attack me in the same way. And I was pressed down on my bed. And every time I tried to I tried to get up. It seemed like I couldn't get up. It seemed like I tried to speak out and no sound was coming out of my mouth. This may sound crazy to someone and somebody else uh, listening may be able to relate, but I'm going to share this story anyway. Who knows? Maybe you have gone through something like this. Maybe you know someone that have gone through something like this. So this stuff is real. And every time I tried to get up, it seemed like this thing would press me down the more. Every time I tried to speak, it seemed like no voice would come out my mouth. But as I began to just whisper, Jesus, Jesus, grown Jesus on the inside, the blood of Jesus, and I was able to break free, break free. Hey, Valerie, good afternoon. I was able to break free. I know I'm not crazy. I called the young lady that was standing in the gap for her friend um, about a day later. And I told her, I said, listen, your friend does not have MS. He need to go back to the doctor. Uh, they misdiagnosed him. This is what's going on. The Lord described the scene to me, described the person to me, described everything that took place. 
She, a couple of days later, she called me back and says, Karen, my friend was at the house of one of his friends and a prophetess happened to be there. When he walked through the door without the prophetess knowing him, God began to reveal to her his situation. So the Bible say out of uh, everything, let it be established between a mouth of two or three. Let everything be established out of the mouth of two or three. I've already told her what the Lord showed me, that the friend did not have a natural sickness. <laughs> he met somebody that told him exactly what I told his friend. But I was able to come out of that attack. My point in all of that, that in which I just said was, I was able to come out of that demonic attack that afternoon by pleading the blood of Jesus. Even though the words could not come out of my mouth, whereas I could not hear myself. But on the inside, I groaned the blood of Jesus. I groaned the name of the Lord. When I begin to call on the name of the Lord, when I begin to plead the blood of Jesus, that little attack that tried to attack me, it had to go. So yes, there is benefits in the blood of Jesus. So from today on, I don't want you to casually talk about the blood. I, when you plead the blood, I want you to know that there is supernatural power. There is redemption in the blood of Jesus. There is power. There is power to destroy every yoke of the enemy. There is power in the blood. And let me tell you, there is life in the blood. And that's why the enemy will try to have us to kill one another. Because he know that uh, that to, together we are stronger. Together we are stronger. But he will launch this all out attack in our community because life is in the blood and he knows that some of these people that God has preordained them to be priests, to be kings in the earth realm, to be pastors in the earth realm, to be apostles, to be deacons, to be the next inventors in the earth realm, to be the next doctors, to be the next lawyers in the earth realm. So they will try to kill off what God has already started. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Even with Jesus, Herod knew who Jesus was. He knew in the form, even though he was, came in the form of a human being. He didn't know exactly, but he knew that he was destined for greatness. So he tried to kill Jesus. He told the people, in that city and in that day, I need you to kill every baby boy that's two years and under because he didn't know exactly how old Jesus was. He knew, but G but God, he hit, he gave Joseph, uh, exp uh, uh, he gave Joseph instructions through the dream to hide that baby because he knew the purpose of Jesus. So today. Glory be to God. I don't know why I'm going this way, but this is the way that the Holy Ghost wants me to go. So today, I want you to link up your faith with me. We're going to begin to plead the blood of Jesus over our children. Hallelujah. That the plan of God for their lives will not be aborted. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. If you agree with me, let me know. Glory be to God. I need somebody to put hashtag his blood. Hallelujah. I need somebody else to put hashtag supernatural power and redemption. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God today, just like he gave it to me, that there is supernatural power and redemption in the blood of Jesus. There is supernatural power in the blood of Jesus, power to heal, power to save, power to set free, 
Power to be delivered. Power, power, power. There is wonder working power in the blood of Jesus. Wonder working power. Hey, yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sabrina. Hallelujah. I plead the blood of Jesus over your ministry. Yes, I need it. Thank you. Thank you for coming in alignment with me. Hallelujah. One could chase a thousand and two could chase 10,000. So for the believers that's out there, I want you right now to begin to believe God with me. Hallelujah. That his blood, we know his blood is not in vain. He didn't shed his blood in vain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did not shed his blood in vain. There is supernatural power and redemption in his blood. Thank you, Prophetess Paula, for joining. Hallelujah. We're talking about the power that's in the blood of Jesus. It is not cliche. I know sometimes we say it reaches the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. His blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And we're going to begin to pray today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We know that the Bible says that the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to just begin to plead the blood today. One could chase a thousand and two could chase ten thousand. Father God, in the most sacred name of Jesus. I come into agreement with your word, Father. God, I come into agreement with all those that are on this breakthrough session today, Father. Whatever they need a breakthrough for in their life today, Father, we know that you're able, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that work it within. We plead the blood of Jesus over, over the churches, we plead the blood of Jesus over the family. We plead the blood of Jesus over our military. We plead the blood of Jesus over our economy. We plead the blood over our education system. We plead the blood of Jesus over the media, over the arts. We plead the blood of Jesus over the transportation system. Father, we cover in all of the territory that you have given us, we cover it under the blood of Jesus. We cover the judicial system today under the blood of Jesus. We bind up every witch, every warlock, every spirit of hoodoo, voodoo, black magic, white magic. We bind all the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus. We come against you with the sword of the spirit dipped in the blood of Jesus. We cut you off now. Every diabolical attack, we uproot you now in the name of Jesus. Even among our people, even in our communities, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over the four corners of the earth. We plead the blood of Jesus over the land, the sea, the air, and even under the sea. We plead the blood of Jesus over the medical arena now. We plead the blood of Jesus over the first response. In the name of Jesus, every job that is represented on this breakthrough session, I plead the blood of Jesus. Every family that is represented on this breakthrough session, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. Every underhand work of the enemy, I bind you now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I loose a rabba shaka. I lose the favor of God. I, I lose the favor of God over you, over your children. Hallelujah. Over your hands, over your feet. I plead the blood of Jesus over your name, even over your pictures in cyberspace. I bind up witchcraft, even in cyberspace, in the name of Jesus. And I lose holiness. Rebe <laughs> Shakata. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you 
and I praise you for what you're doing in the atmosphere, Father. God, I thank you that all creation is travailing and groaning to be with you. And Father, now, God, I pray for the, for the unsaved today, God. Father, the unsaved in our community, Father, in our family, Father, I call them in. I call them into the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. All the backsliders, Father, that's in our circle of influence, I call them back. Ha, the slide back into the kingdom of God. And we cover this session with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. His blood, supernatural power, and redemption. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sabrina. Hallelujah. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for coming into agreement with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Had not it been for the blood of Jesus, I would not be saved. I would have missed the call of God on my life. I would have aborted the call of God on my life. Hallelujah. And there's somebody, hallelujah, that's not listening now. You're going to listen to the replay. Hey, this word is for you. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pull you out. I pull you out of that homongering spirit. I pull you out of it in the name of Jesus. And I cover you with the blood of Jesus. You can make it. You can live. You will live. And you you will live, you will not die, and you will, hallelujah, declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah, God spared my life. He saved me, he sanctified me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost, and he put his word in my mouth. Hallelujah, that I may preach and teach. Hallelujah, prophesy. Hallelujah, lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus and see them recover and pull, hallelujah, the captives out of sin. Hallelujah, it was the blood of Jesus that saved me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Young lady, you're going to listen to this replay. And just as God began to deal with me with my sinful life, hallelujah, he showed me that pamphlet about the blood. Hallelujah. I was always a church goer. I've always believed Jesus. Come on, somebody. But I was not standing in a position that God created me to stand in. It was only until I got a revelation of the blood of Jesus. Then I was able to stand in the position, hallelujah, in the apostolic, in the prophetic position that God has called me to stand in, hallelujah, again, once again, there's a young lady, you're going to listen to this replay, hallelujah, in this, hallelujah, word is going to convict your heart, hallelujah, glory be to God, and yes, you can go ahead and inbox me, you can go ahead and inbox me, hallelujah, glory be to God, this scope, it's going to teach you how to get over. The man, hallelujah, he can't do it. Your sugar daddy, hallelujah, he can't do it for you no more. Hallelujah, it's time for you to come up higher. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Your way with living, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God is telling me to tell you, hallelujah, it's time to do away with your way with living. Hallelujah, and it's time to come up higher. Hallelujah, it's time to come up higher. And the only way we're going to come up higher is through the blood. And what's going to keep us is the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood covers our life. The blood of Jesus covers our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be saying, well, I can't make it. Hallelujah. But I want to let you know today that the way of escape has already been made. It's been made through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody may be saying, well, I fell down, but I want to let you know today, pick yourself up, pick yourself up, pick yourself up. The way of escape has already been made. It's been made through the blood of Jesus. In fact, the Bible says a just man fallen seven times. Hallelujah. But he get back up. Hallelujah. God is causing you to listen today because you fail, you slip, and you're thinking about doing something that you ought not do. But I want to let you know today that the way has been made. Hallelujah. The way has been made for you through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Latanya, for joining me. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Apostle Don, for joining. Amen. We're talking about the blood of Jesus, supernatural power and redemption. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to close out. So for those of you that are just joining, you may want to go back and listen to the replay. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus heals you. It saves you. It delivers you. It protects you. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is also, hallelujah, he lost his blood. He shed his blood even to be a uh, provision for you. Amen. Hallelujah. To learn more. Hallelujah. Again, his blood, supernatural power and redemption. Thank you guys so much for sharing this noonday breakthrough with me. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And may he forever make his face to shine upon you. Until we meet again, God bless you. Peace.